day of judgment may be near it. What a morning that will be. There'll be safety there in Jesus. Oh, yeah. of ages left for me. Slip there. Oh, my love is Okay, well, today I've got my brother in Christ Donovan <laughs> and my brother in Christ Isaac, and we are going to study and open God's Word. And but first, before we do that, um, Isaac and I are going to sing Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee, He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the fowler's snare. And from the noisome pestilence, he shall deliver thee, O God, my God, in him will I trust. He shall cover, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wing shalt thou trust. Under his wing shalt thou trust, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler, thy buckler. Psalm 91, 1 through 7. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the noisome pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all of thy ways. Psalms 91, 11. Oh, God is good. He puts a song in our heart. Yes. Well, we came here to a cave, and it makes me think of the persecution that believers have been in, in the Walden Seas, back during the Dark Ages, how they worship in caves. And God has prepared the caverns of the earth for his persecuted people. And as there was persecution in the past, so there will be again. History will repeat itself. Yes. Yes. Okay, so the study tonight, we're going to look and see, is the concept of a secret rapture, is it in the Bible? Is it biblical? Is it sound teaching? Is it sound doctrine? Or 
is it a false teaching? Yes, it's very important to know what you believe and whether it's true or not. Yes. Being honest with ourselves and, yes. and, and honestly looking at things instead of listening to what other people have told us and making a decision off of that. Yes. Lazy Christianity. Yes. I, I feel like things like the rapture come from lazy Christianity to where instead of finding the truth out for ourselves, we instead watch a pastor or we watch somebody else give us the truth and then we believe what they say. Mm. Yes. So, here is why I have a concern about the rapture theory or the rapture, the secret rapture teaching. Now, let me clarify something. When I say rapture, the concept of being the righteous, being raptured up, meet their Lord in the air, that concept is in the Word of God. But the word rapture is not in the Bible. You won't find it in God's word. And this idea of a secret rapture, as we go on through this study, we will see that the secret rapture is not in God's word. See, the, the popular teaching today is that before the Antichrist comes in power, before the beast enforces the mark uh, on, on the world, that God's people will be raptured out so they don't have to be in that persecution. They don't have to face that great test. Hmm. So if it's true that there's a secret rapture and God's people are raptured out before this time, then nobody needs to be concerned about who the beast is or what his mark is or to not have to receive it. Interesting. So if Satan wants people to be unprepared for the beast rising in power and enforcing the mark on people, wouldn't he introduce a teaching into the churches that would lead people to be, un if you're not going to be here during the reign of the beast, why worry about it? Why be concerned about who the beast is or what his mark is? Interesting. If you're going to be secretly taken away, oh. you know, uh, so Satan has a reason why he has introduced this false teaching into the churches. See, let me read here from the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints." Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So I was doing some ministry work, traveling, and I was walking and riding and riding and walking. And a guy saw me walking on the side of the road. He's like, hey, you need to ride? I'm like, yeah. So I, he, I rode with him as far as he was going. And uh, in the course of our conversation, I asked him, I said, are you prepared for the beast to rise in power? And are you prepared for when, when they're forcing the mark on people, are you prepared to say no to that mark? And do you know what that mark is? Mm. And he said, oh, I'm not concerned about that. Uh, I'm not worried about that at all because he said God's people will be raptured away and they won't have to face the beast or that Wow. Issue. Why would the sinners need to know that information? Why would God give that information to the people left behind? Right? Mm. That's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. So I asked him a question. I mm. said, if it's true that all of God's people get raptured away before the beast rises in power and enforces the mark, if that's true, then why would God warn people not to receive the mark? Mm. If all the people that listen to God and that obey him... Who is he warning? The, the wicked are, are not going to listen to the warning. Oh. That's a good point. And I told him, I wish that you were correct. <laughs> yeah. Don't we yeah. all yeah. wish 
to escape persecution? Absolutely. Don't yes, we man. all wish to to uh, not have to go through the fiery furnace of affliction? Mm. Don't don't we wish for an easier route to travel, an easier life? Who who wants wow. to face the beast rising in power and be told if you don't receive this mark, you cannot buy or sell? That's economic sanctions. That's hard enough. But then mm-hmm. later, as the beast becomes more and more powerful, he says, if you do not take this mark, you will be killed in Revelation chapter 13. That's right. So That's right. it's a progression of it. At first, it's just the economic sanction. You can't buy or sell. You can't be part of Which the economic Which will be hard system. enough. That will be very hard. Yeah. But then it will go farther than that. If you don't receive the mark, you will be killed. So we're going to look at some more scriptures um second timothy chapter 3 and verse 12 yea and all that will live godly in christ jesus shall suffer persecution that's a promise that's a promise don't think that you're going to be secretly raptured away so that you don't have to be persecuted during the, the time of that beast rising in power and the antichrist no <clears throat> you will if you live godly in christ jesus you will suffer persecution now now does that apply to today too does that apply to today at this point if 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 so if you're a christian and you face no persecution at all would that be a sign that perhaps you aren't going 100 percent for god that you aren't fully in for god because it says you will be persecuted you will be hated Mm-hmm. I know as a Christian, I have experienced that. I have experienced, yes. I have experienced people, the demons coming out, and, and mm-hmm. people, you know, it, it's a spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. It really but, is. It, but if you're a Christian, you will see it. it it's impossible not to. Mm-hmm. Amen. But the lukewarm won't see anything. Mm-hmm. There are times when we are under God's protection and under His favor, and there's been times yes. when kings have favored God's people, uh, and God's people are experiencing favor and blessing. And so, it, you know, if you're, if you're being richly blessed in different ways, it, that may not mean that you're an ungodly person or that you're not living your faith. But at some point in your life, you will experience persecution yes. for, for your faith. And there's, God's people have been, always been persecuted. Mm-hmm. But we're told in Daniel chapter 12 that there will be a time of trouble such as there never was since there was a nation. We're approaching that time very, very soon. Agreed. Uh, we're we're on the right on the brink of that. Very obvious. We're at the very toenail <laughs> of the end of the world. Mm, <laughs> the <yes>. very tip. <laughs> yes. We're going to look now at Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse three. So, for those of you that are watching on uh, later on YouTube. Uh, you might want to pause the video and go and get your Bible. That way you can look these up with me. Okay, Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, referring to the day of Christ, is coming. That day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So before Jesus comes to take his children home, this man of sin will be revealed. Mm. He will think that he's God. He will call himself God. And there will be a falling away. A falling away of what? Christians. Falling away of, of mankind. But especially within Christianity. So when you are holding on to the truth of God's word, you're holding on to his hand by faith. You're walking. And you cannot fall. But there will be a falling away of people who let go of that hand. Hmm. They let go of the truth of God's word. And they fall. This is the falling away. 
Sounds a lot like today. Falling away from pure biblical teaching, pure, pure biblical doctrine. The evidence is all around us. I mean, how, how many churches do we hear talking about modesty? Mm. How many churches do we hear that tell you not to have sex before marriage? Mm. Christian standards have really... Christian standards are so low. They're non-existent. Almost. Yes. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. The day of Jesus coming to take his children home. That day that we're, we're anticipating of seeing Jesus in the clouds. Let that day no. will, will not come except there be... A falling there come away a first. falling away first. So first this falling away comes, this man of perdition is revealed, then Jesus comes. Is that the Antichrist? Yes. The whole, the entire rapture theory threads on one verse. <clears throat> this is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Mm. This verse is the basis of the secret rapture theory. A, a, a misunderstanding of this verse. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't say it's a secret there. It, it says the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds yes. to meet the Lord in the air. Yes. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So it, it happens all at the same time. All the righteous dead are raised, and, and all the righteous who live until Jesus comes, they're caught up to meet him in the air. But it doesn't say there what happens to the, the wicked who are alive when Jesus comes. Mm. And we can find that somewhere else. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we can look in Revelation chapter 6 to see how the wicked are going to react All right. when Jesus comes. I need to restart the camera really quick. I'll stand in the middle here. <laughs> uh, Isaac and I are going to sing... Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. But I would, would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him, will God bring with him, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Forever be with the Lord. So it says the Lord himself. Who is that? That is Jesus, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeshua, our <laughs> Messiah. The Lord himself shall descend 
from heaven. So he's coming down from heaven with what? A shout. A shout. Very clear. <laughs> Very loud. And with the voice of the archangel. Mm. And with what? The trump of God. The trump of God. <laughs> it's going to be a loud sound. Does that sound secret to you? No. You not don't blow me. a trumpet if you're trying to keep a secret. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like everybody on the earth is going to see it at the same time. Yes. That's what it sounds like. Yes. What about if you're deaf? Jesus yes. made Even deaf, the deaf ears and to hear. blind. Yeah, that's right. That's Jesus right. made, when, when, when Jesus was here, Yeshua was here, he made blind eyes to see. He made deaf ears to hear. He will do it again. When he yes. comes, he will, he will definitely do it. I think there's a text in Psalm 50, verse 3, where it says that when the Lord comes, He's not going to keep silent. And it talks about Him roaring from on high and uttering His voice. And even the deaf will hear at that time. Wow. That's yes. beautiful. Yes, this is Psalm chapter 50, and verse 3. Our God shall come. Who is our God? That is Yahweh. <laughs> yes, our God shall come. Isaiah 50 verse 3, Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. <clears throat> so if somebody was deaf, they would be able to feel it, right? The, a tempest. Absolutely. Absolutely. He shall call to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together with me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Yes, when our God comes, will he keep silence? Not at all. No. <laughs> God's word makes it very clear. He will not be silent when he comes. I think he's going to be excited to be reunited with his people. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. This mm. is what we've been all been waiting for. Yes. You know, the destruction of Satan, the defeat, the final, well, to be called up and be face to face with God himself. Mm. What mm. better pleasure for our soul's reward, you know? Yeah, what a joy that will be. Yes. Yeah, that is our soul's reward, to see God face to face. Yes. Okay, this is Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones. What did the Apostle John see in his vision? Thrones. Thrones. And they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So if God's people are raptured away when the beast rises in power and enforces his mark, then how could John see people who had gone through this fiery ordeal and did not receive the mark. It's impossible. Well, well, they would say, like in the Left Behind series, is all about somebody coming and, and getting salvation after everything had happened and the Christians were caught up, and then you get one more chance if you were a sinner. It, it's convoluted. And it doesn't make much sense. Mm -hmm. but, but they twist Scripture in order to make it seem like that. Mm -hmm. that that's what the response would be. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't make much sense because the, once you are marked, you are marked. If you take the mark of the beast, there is no coming back to God after that. It's set in stone at that point. You've made your decision. Mm. And, and I believe Satan's deception in with the rapture theory is to get you to think that you can have a chance after the mark of the beast has been enforced. Because it gives people the idea and the thought that they can sin and be and do whatever they want. But if Jesus comes again, they'll still have one more chance mm. to get salvation, which mm. isn't true. 
the Bible says today is the day of salvation. So if you think that, oh, you know, if, if I don't make it with the, the first rapture, then I'll make it with the second. That's then, a false hope. Then That's a very you, yes, false hope. You're, you're, it's the oil. That's you're, not having your oil. You're putting it off. Don't think that you can live your life and live for self and live for sin and enjoy Satan's sinful pleasures. And then, well, if I don't make it in the first rapture, then the beast will rise in power and I'll get persecuted, but then there's a second chance for me. That's a false hope. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Mm. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Abundantly pardon. Praise God for that. that. That's in Isaiah chapter 55. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at another scripture. Matthew chapter 13 in verses 24 through 27. Matthew 13, 24 to 27. Yes. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household, the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So, <clears throat> what is first burned up before the grain is taken to the barn? The, the tares. The tares. The tares. And the tares are a symbol of who? The wicked. Or, or those who are Luke professing Christians? to be Christians, but not... Wicked or professing Christians who by their actions show that they're not. Because actions speak louder than words. Yes. Many will say, Lord, 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 Lord. I, I, didn't we cast out devils in your name and do all these wonderful works? And Jesus will say, I never knew you depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Mm-hmm. So first the wicked, according to this parable, first the wicked are burned up then the righteous are taken to heaven. The barn is God's house, the storehouse, where his children are safely gathered. So first the wicked are burned up, then, and we can read in the book of Second Peter, how, which chapter is that, Isaac? In Second Peter, where it speaks of the elements melting with fervent heat. Oh, that's in chapter three, I believe. Yes, Second Peter chapter three speaks of the day of the Lord when Jesus comes and the elements melting with fervent heat. Yes, in 2 Peter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And some, some people stop right there and say, see, he's coming like a thief in the night. It's going to be a secret. <laughs> but it doesn't stop there. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt. With fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Mm. Looking for and hastening, or hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Mm-hmm. So it's, Yes. 
it's not. It, it may be like a thief in the night, but it's not going to be a secret. Yes. When the thief shows up, when Jesus shows up to. The thief in the night is more like an unexpected thing. It, you don't expect a thief to come into your house at night. Yes. But, you know, it's no secret when you wake up in the morning and you see the mess that's been made. Yes. <laughs> so for those who are unprepared to meet Yeshua, to meet Jesus, to meet their maker, to meet the judge of the universe, for those who are not prepared, it will come to them as a thief in the night. That's right. Because they are unprepared. But to those people who are walking with their Savior now, when they see Yeshua, Jesus in the clouds, they will say, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. Hmm. I think that's in Isaiah, Isaiah 24, verse 8. Yes. Yes, they will, they will meet him with joy. But the wicked... We read in, in Revelation chapter 6, they will beg for the rocks to fall on them. That's right. To hide them from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. And, and here's another thing about giving your life to the Lord. The devil will put it in your head that, oh, I can put it off, I can put it off. But you don't understand that you are hurting the people around you by not being born again. A wicked man, it is in his nature to do wickedly. Even if they don't realize it, it, it's the nature that needs to be changed. And until you're born again, you have that sin nature. You can't help yourself but to do evil. Mm. Yes, we have to be born again. Actually, that was Isaiah 25, verse 9. Okay. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Mm. Amen. 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 Yes. This is Matthew chapter 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil. With them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Who is the bridegroom? That would be Jesus, Yeshua, yes, our Savior. And who are these ten virgins representing? The ten virgins would represent the Church, yes, on earth, and was all of the church asleep? Yes, all yes. of them were sleeping. Yes, but there was this cry made. Was it secret, or were were they hearing a voice? They an they all heard a voice. They yes. all heard an, an announcement saying, "Behold." The bridegroom cometh. Get ready. The Go bridegroom is coming. Him. Get ready. Jesus is coming. Get ready. Yeshua is coming. They hear this voice. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So my question for you tonight, will you be part of the group, the small group, that says, lo, this is our God. We have waited for Him and He will save us. Will you be part of that group? Or will you be part of the much larger group that cries for the rocks to fall on them, 
hide me. Oh, if I could just find, just find a cave or a rock. Oh, begging rocks, please fall on me. Hide me from the face of the one that's on the throne. What group will you be in on that day? He will come. He that shall come will come and will not tarry. Please study these scriptures and don't stop where we've stopped in this Bible study. Continue on studying. Continue on studying. Let us not be deceived into thinking a false doctrine. If there is a secret rapture and God's people are raptured away, then you need to make no preparation for the beast rising in power and enforcing the mark. None. You would just need to make sure that you were one of God's people. Yeah. But if that's a false doctrine, then you need to be asking for strength now to endure that test. And if we will not be raptured away before the beast rises in power and we cannot by ourselves, we cannot be part of the economic system, then that means that now we need to be learning to grow our own food. Now we need to be learning to live off the land. Hmm. Now we need to be learning these skills to where we won't have to be dependent upon the world's government economy system in order to survive. Yes. What you believe about this will shape how you live. It will shape where you live. If you will get raptured away before the beast rises in power, then you can keep on living in the city, working your office job or your corporate job. But if you believe, as we do, that we will not be raptured away before the beast rises in power, but we will have to face the beast and resist the mark, reject the mark, because we believe this, we move out of the cities. We get out of the cities and we learn skills to live off the land. So it's very important that what you believe is is not just a theory. It's not just an abstract theological concept. The life is molded by the faith. What you believe about this will change where you live and how you live your life. Belief is powerful. Yes. Do you brothers have anything more that God is putting in your mind to share? Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't think that... If, if you have any thought that you can wait and, and not come to God and, and do it later or put it off to another date, it, it's an absolute deception of the devil. And we need to be honest with ourselves and, and understand that there is no good to be done on our own, but only when we have that connection to our Heavenly Father. Mm. We do things that we think are good but are really evil. Because we're not connected to our Heavenly Father. Satan, you know, the path to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm -hmm. Yes. People going to hell really think they're doing the right thing. And they really, and and how do they get deceived in that way? It's because they're not honest with themselves. So let us be honest with ourselves. Amen. About where we are. If we're caught up in sin, that's a clear sign that we have some work to do Mm. in our connection to God. Amen. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. At the Lord's portals he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinner, come home. Think of the wonderful love
he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinners.